It's been five years since me and my mate Wal had crossed the Severn Bridge into Wales to canoe a section of the River Wye. We parked up at Hereford Rowing Club and got a canoe taxi to take us upstream to Hay with our gear so that on completion of the trip back at Hereford we'd have our own vehicle waiting for us. Considered by many to be the finest section of the Y, the stretch of river between Hay and Hereford is a lot quieter than some of the more popular routes further south. The trip is roughly 30 miles by river and we reckoned it would take us about three days with a couple of nights on the river bank. The put-in spot at Hay can be busy, acting as both an in and out point. The water is fairly shallow here when levels are low. It was mid-May and it's been a dry spring, so therefore it was low. Immediately downstream from the put-in, you're into some fast-flowing water with roiling, boiling riffles and rapids to keep you on your toes. The mayflies and other bugs were out in great numbers. That's not dust on the sensor, that's flying insects in cloud-like proportions. Whoa, cool as a cucumber. He makes that tricky little rapid look as easy as. It wasn't. It's a short paddle out of hay, and before you know it, you're stretching back and enjoying the quiet countryside of Herefordshire. What a balm to the soul in these insane times that we're living through. The river downstream from Hay has many little riffles and mini rapids to keep you amused and interested. There seems to be a different cascade of water around every corner. Just past Whitney Toll Bridge, there's a fast little narrowing of the river as it passes to the left of the small island that the river runs round on both sides. Due to low water levels, we did scrape the bottoms of our boats getting through here. Not much farther on and we found a lovely little spot for a camp. I know wild camping, in inverted commas, has become quite trendy of late, but I just know it as camping. I've always slept out on God's earth. It's not new to me. It's not a crime and never will be in my opinion. To those who get a bit antsy about people choosing to spend the odd night in a secluded spot on the riverbank, I say this. Are wild campers, ramblers and wild swimmers causing as much damage to the river or indeed any damage to the environment as the large-scale chicken farms in this neck of the woods that spew millions of gallons of effluent and run off into the river and in the process are actually killing this beautiful river? What a perfect spot. North Somerset venison cooking on the barbecue Red wine in the mug, the sun's still shining, and the wind's dropped. Cheers.
Day two on the Y. Just broke camp this morning. Uh, the weather's turned a bit soggy. Uh, it was raining while we had our breakfast this morning, so the last thing you want to do when it's uh, raining and you're cooking bacon is get the camera and tripod out and start faffing around with lenses. The bird life on the Y is, uh, is just how I remember it, it's amazing. I got swallows buzzing around my head, got Canada geese on the right, I just saw a kingfisher diving into the river for its breakfast. We had bats last night swooping around our camp. Uh, oh, and a red kite. A red kite was pretty special just out of Hay on Wye yesterday. Uh, Wall would mention that he, he hadn't seen a kingfisher. Well, I beat him to that one this morning. Talking of which, I can see him coming up the rear. He's a bit of a faffer in the morning. Well then, Walt, what a faffer. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna go on. I'll wait for him to catch up and uh, hopefully stick a camera on his boat and get some more footage, because this is just amazing. After a rather relaxing lunch on the riverbank, the weather turned nasty again for a while, just before a fast section of water before Bradwardine. This little chicane section can catch out unwary paddlers as it cuts very close to the right bank under some willow trees. It would be easy to get caught out on a strainer here. Be wary. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Bradwardine Bridge has to be the prettiest bridge on the whole of the Y. Mind you, I haven't seen the whole of the Y, so there may be other beauties waiting to be discovered. We heard cuckoos on the Y every day. I hadn't heard one in my neck of the woods for years. That was lovely. The next fast moving water was at Monington Falls, the location of the infamous bailout incident five years previous. I laugh at that now and at how inexperienced I was. Looking at the way I calmly paddle my way through this narrow little fast chute, I marvel at how confident I've become in my canoe. <laughs> Late in the afternoon, we arrived at Preston campsite, a little reluctant to use an organised campsite, but thankfully we found ourselves sharing the whole place with just one motor home. It's a lovely little basics campsite with just two standalone portaloos in the field. 
Not exactly a well-equipped place, but that was its charm. We woke to an ominous sky on our third day, heavy with rain clouds. It was hard to peel myself out of my sleeping bag. <laughs> Fortified with a slap-up breakfast and coffee, we headed downstream on the last leg to Hereford. It's approximately just over 10 miles from Preston to Hereford Rowing Club. The third day was a relaxed paddle in mainly warm sunshine, and we had an amazing encounter with a leaping salmon. I'm guessing here, but maybe the salmon think that a canoe gliding over the top of them is a bigger fish? Maybe it's a threat? This happened to us a few times on this trip, so I can only conclude that the canoe spurs them into some sort of defensive action. Or maybe they're just having some fun. The last straight stretch of river back into Hereford seemed to go on forever. After the last small rapid, we were back into the rowing club stretch of water and had to keep to river right to avoid the swift club boats firing past us at great speed. That's one realization that you're back in civilization. After our slow pace of travel, the sharp pace of a sculling racing shell is rather abrasive to the senses. Being near to water, on the water, or indeed in the water, is a restorative. Although paddling does take some serious physical effort, the rewards are great, 